Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, Nuclear Skull 87, or perhaps better known by my real name, Luke Joseph Murphy, or my other nickname, Luke the Nuke, as you've seen in my description for my previous video. And as you can tell here, we're going to be doing part two of my Serious Sam first encounter walkthrough with commentary, that is with my voice speaking. And let's go ahead and press load here. We're on Valley of the Kings at the moment. And I'm just going to turn up the volume on my thing a little bit here, just so you can hear things a bit better, perhaps, as well as my voice, more importantly. My voice giving you guidance, as a wise man would say in that movie. And let's take out that kamikaze marine there. His history, yeah. We're gonna blast him to Gibbs, how about now, shall we? And voila, thought he is dead now. Gonna kill him from afar so he doesn't explode on me. And as you can tell here, we're gonna be walking through this epically huge canyon to get to that other Egyptian building over there. And the Syrian where a bull is a thing of the past. He is nothing more than mere memories now. <laughs> okay, let's shoot him down. Should be a good, easy trick. Not as easy as I thought I would be, I guess, but hell, what the heck. I'll take him down now. <laughs> let's take out... Wait a minute, I forgot I don't have a rocket launcher yet. Duh. We'll, we will be getting up there, up those fleet of stairs. Let's just take out this guy first. Oh, I don't have any other weapons at the moment, which is fine. And my head's a tiny bit foggy and allergenic because I am gluten intolerant and I ate a small piece of steak that just so happened to have gluten, so caused a rather unpleasant anxiety attack earlier. But hey, that's... Not worth worrying about. It's a thing of the past. And I believe we can now go up this fleet of stairs. Oh, I guess not yet. My bad. And hopefully we can go up the stairs now without any enemy resistance. <laughs> and voila, I think we'll be able to. Of course, that guy shouldn't be a problem to take out. In fact, I think he's a new enemy. Or... I'm not sure, actually. Aludran Reptiloid Common. A large four-handed reptile living in the Aludran system in the constellation of Canis Major. This primitive race has agreed to fight for mental in exchange for the spell-casting powers it gave them. They cast self-propelled fireballs with primitive homing abilities. Tips. Keep them under constant fire and try to shoot down their missiles in air. Okay, and here's our first ever... Rocket launcher. And he's right. Then we'll just keep shooting these at this giant, kind of reddish orange Aludroid Reptiloid. Aludran Reptiloid. Aludran Reptiloid, I should say. <laughs> and whatnot. And he's almost done. You just 
essentially just keep on shooting at him and he'll be a thing of the past. Okay, what does the Nitriska got to say now? Rocket Launcher, Experimental Personal Missile Launcher, XPML-21, uh, is designed to provide infantry forces with a fast firing rate of fire anti-armor rockets. Fires high-speed, unguided, self-propelled Inferno missiles. Notes, efficient against armored opponents in large masses of weak forces. Do not fire near close obstacles. So, of course, you never want to shoot a weapon of this type against an enemy up close and personal because it will hurt you as much as it will him or her. Okay, what else? <clears throat> okay, it's basic same thing, except for the few difference. A large four-handed reptile living at a Ludrin system in the constellation of Canis Major. This primitive race has agreed to fight for mental in exchange for the spell casting powers it gave them. They cast self-propelled fireballs with primitive homing abilities. The Highlander race is, in, is significantly larger and more dangerous than the ordinary ones living in the plains. When furious, they cast their missiles in very quick succession. Tips. Keep them under constant fire and try to shoot down their missiles in air. Which is largely what I was doing when I was fighting them. And so now, we get to go through here. As that brief little sequence suggested, of which I won't show entirely, of course, is a golden ock, which we'll need to get through the door over there. Where I'm pointing at, right there. And let's take out some enemies first, though, so it'll be easier. So it'll be a lot easier, of course, to take them out. And let's blow up these dudes so they won't be a problem later. Blasted them the Gibbs, boy. Ain't that way too much fun? It is. Okay, and we're gonna hit our switch here, which will open up the door. It won't be the only one. There will be another one at the opposite end of the platform here, of which we'll have to get the Ankh, of course. Let's take out this dude first, no doubt. And okay, I'll contaminate the water there with his gibbs. Oh man, I was looking forward to blowing him up into the water there. The swimming pool type thing, I guess you could say. Okay. <laughs> and, all uh, right. <laughs> Let's see. We're gonna have to take out these enemies before we can hit that other switch. And... Right? The important thing is she's dead. We won't have to deal with her later. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the other switch. And before I go grab the Ankh, let's uh, shoot this arachnoid first. So he won't be a problem later on. Ah, there we go. Finally got my chance to contaminate the swimming pool with his blood and gibbs. And another one. Okay, let's grab the Ankh now. And... I believe we'll be ready to proceed, no doubt. And voila. And I think this is where we're supposed to go. I could be wrong, though, so don't mark my words as gospel, of course. Nope, that's not it, my bad. Oh, that's it, right over there. Straight. Jump over the platform containing the Ankh. <clears throat> Interesting room here, or corridor, depending on what you want to call it. Hopefully my voice could be heard loudly enough before I turned up the volume a little bit just in case you couldn't hear my voice properly. And okay. So as you can tell, we're going to have to go through here. We're going to be in a new room. Obviously, one, we're going to have to fight enemies before we can 
proceed, as I described earlier in my first walkthrough video for this game. And of course we've got some marsh hoppers to deal with. Oh, ironically we don't have to wait until all the enemies are dead in that room. It let us through, even if there was enemies. Not bad. <laughs> I sound more like Chewbacca or Wookiee than I do an enemy in this game. <laughs> Grab some ammunition, as we'll probably need it. That is especially if you're playing on a harder difficulty, no doubt. All right, where are you, boy? <laughs> they are history. Yeah. They are now nothing more than mere memories, I'm afraid. Not that it matters to me. Now let's see what goodies we got up here. Oh. When I take out this enemy, let's read a manuscript. And let's read it. Papyrus, Mountains of the Moon. This papyrus tells about the Mountains of the Moon. It is a mythical place which, as ancient Egyptians believed, is a source of the Nile. I'm not sure if that place really exists. The Nile River is the greatest river in Africa, and the longest river in the world. By its banks, the Egyptian civilization was born and passed away. <clears throat> nice little tidbit of information there. Obviously... You could easily crack your skull if you were slip sliding on that in real life. And I don't need that because my armor is pretty full. I did get some shells there though. Okay. We're gonna go down here now. And take out this ugly scorpion thing there. He had to take out those things first, so now let's take out the arachnoid, or whatever it's called. Oops, shot at the wall instead of the thing. I think that's what it's called. I don't know why I have a unique tendency to forget the names of these enemies in this game, except the clears as well as the kamikaze marines. Maybe just my brain's tired and it's still kind of recuperating from the gluten I had due to that steak. Now, I'll take anything meaty as long as it's gluten-free, but... Of course, if it has gluten, I don't feel too well afterwards. Okay. Now, we can't go through that black room until we've defeated all the clears that are going to enter the room here through that black wall of blackness. And what? And I, they're not here yet. They haven't arrived yet, ironically. <clears throat> oh, there they are. I hadn't really noticed until now that you do... If you look closely, you see a wall come down. And hadn't noticed that until now, having played it just now, recording this video. Oh, there's another clear. <clears throat> Surprise that didn't blow out the torch there. I'm a little dumbfounded that the explosion of the kamikaze marine when I shot him didn't take out one of those torches. Oh well, this is a video game with graphics that we would deem as rather primitive compared to now. This is a somewhat updated version, though, of the first Serious Sam first encounter that I'm playing right now. Because it's a part of a Serious Sam gold collection, I think it's called. And yeah... Let's grab some stuff here, some goodies. Let's grab that heart. Now this will be a bit of a trap as you can on, tell you here. And you're going to have to defeat a group of enemies before you can escape from this thing here. The circular thing, I should say. Hmm. 
<laughs> Seriously, is that the best you can do? Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Ken, you won't be able to escape this thing until you've defeated all the enemies, and one of these doors will open sesame, of course. <laughs> oh, it already did for some reason. So, after you've defeated all those Syrian soldiers, and once the clears arrive, more or less, he'll be able to get out of there. And, of course, we need to take out this guy. And he is a thing of the past. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that switch there. So we'll be able to get to something other. I'm going to go ahead and hit the switch in this other room here because there's a spike thing that can get you killed if you're not careful that can fall on you. We don't want that. So let's hit this other switch here first. And as you can tell there, we just, um, I thought that was good instruction to show you that so you can know that it's safe to go there now. First we've got to take out these guys. Alrighty then, let's grab the Ankh from here, and I don't think this spike ceiling's gonna come down on you, but I would get out of there rather quickly, just in case it can somehow, because I kind of recall a long time ago, back in the 2000s, about four or five years after this game was released, at the time that was, that falling down on me. Maybe it was something else, but still I thought that'd be important to point out. Okay, now we're gonna go through this door right chair and we have a new weapon at our disposal simply a tommy gun but I like it they're best I think when taking out marsh hoppers as we're gonna see here demonstrated After I'm done killing all these marsh hoppers, I'm going to go ahead and use a different weapon just to conserve ammunition in the weapon, of course. That's what I tend to do. That's what I choose to do anyway. You, but I would suggest not using it all the time right away, just so you can conserve ammo in the Tommy gun. And this room over here and to our right is where we're going to proceed. Ah! That clear definitely got me. There's no question about it. All right, let's see what Natriska has to say about the M1A2 Thompson submachine gun. Originally invented by General Thompson, this submachine gun has survived two world wars, and with recent improvements, it is back on the track. This old timer was modified to accept 5.56 millimeter ammo to be compatible with other standard infantry weapons, and its universal drum container can be filled from any standard ammo pack. Notes. Provides both rapid fire mode and controlled short burst. I don't even know how to do that despite having played this game for so many years. What the heck? It doesn't matter. Oh, and we got a new element here. What that is, I'm not sure. And <clears throat> you'll see it entirety in its entirety once you do play the game. Ah, let's stop and listen to this music briefly for a moment. Man, that is relaxing. That cleanses the soul, if you ask me. I had to take three deep breaths as I was briefly listening to that music. And you won't believe something funny that happens here when you cross that bridge, as we're going to see in a moment. Just wanted to grab a few items first, though. Okay, let's go across, and we're going to see something funny. In fact, it's a reference to a movie here. Watch. <laughs> now that, in case you didn't notice, was a reference to the second Indiana Jones movie Temple of Doom where the rope bridge splits in half basically and well that's the end of that level I believe 
let's see what Natriska has to say here about the oasis. There is only one more element to collect. The water element. Water from the underground stream is pushing us through the mountain tunnel, and we should soon reach the exit. If I'm not mistaken, we will be thrown into the oasis. If so, our objective will be very close. Enter the shrine built on this oasis and find the water element. Now, I'm going to go ahead and grab some ammunition for my Tommy gun down here. However, you do not want to stay underwater in any area for too long because you will run out of air and oxygen. This is especially prone if the water, if the lake or the pool is very, very deep. So you definitely don't want to stay underwater for too long. <laughs> <clears throat> and we're going to have some enemies to take on here. Finally, I've got a good amount of ammunition in my Tommy gun to the point I can start using it more frequently. All right, let's go find some ammunition up here. And voila. I think that just about almost filled up my Tommy gun. Except I'm going to use the rocket launcher on this guy since it takes longer to take him out. And we've got a new enemy here called the Scythian Witch Harpy. I love for some reason shooting Scythian Witch Harpies up close and personal. Why that is, I'm not sure, but it's a lot of fun if you ask me. And they are history. Yeah. Let's see what Natriska has to say about them. Description. A female clone of a lawn extinct Scythian race. A witch Harpy is trained in close combat and casting combat spells. Its flying ability allows it to reach otherwise unreachable positions and attack their enemy from above. Tips. When in large groups, make minced meat with minigun or rocket them away. Take down individuals with double-barreled shotgun. Which is largely what I did just now, as you can tell. <coughs> <coughs> I don't think there's any more enemies we need to worry about, except the music is still going. Now you'll notice if the music is getting more intense, more and more intense, I should say, that means enemies are in the area. I thought that'd be important to quickly point out. Alright, kaboom! I think that's the end of that part, I believe. Let's now get to our destination here, which is this temple. And here we are. And we've got a new weapon, a grenade launcher. Let's see what Natriska has to say about it. Description, a reliable infantry grenade thrower with adjustable launching speed. MK3 is designed to deliver highly explosive grenades over obstacles and around corners whilst reducing the chance of the operator being hurt by the projectile. A smart impact detonator detonates the grenade on impact with a live target but not with the wall. Notes. Tap the trigger for slow launching or hold it down to deliver at longer ranges. Wide range explosions are effective against large masses of enemies. Bounce grenades around corners or lob them over walls.
I'm not going to use it right now, just because there's so little ammo in it at the moment. Ammunition, in other words. Ammo, which is short for ammunition. <clears throat> Now, there's a bit of an easter egg here. Supposedly, if you shoot this, something will happen where you can take yourself to a previously inaccessible area. I could be wrong, though. Maybe there's something else you gotta do. But you'll discover for yourself, if not me for you, of course. You're all smart players watching this video. Sound attack secret has been found. That's what I think I was looking for. Let's go see what it is. Oh, of course, there's got to be a, an influx of enemies before I can do that. Arr. I'll take them out with the Tommy gun, I believe. <coughs> and yes! Let's see. Arr. Oh, maybe that doesn't really seem to work. Oh, well. Okay, I'm gonna go grab some armor before it gets too, too low. So as you can tell, this is an area where we're going to be having a lot of enemies and we won't be able to proceed through the door straight until we defeat all those said enemies. Let's get serious. Take them out, some of them with a rocket launcher. That's an even slightly quicker, faster, easier way to take out the enemies in this room. Interesting techno rock music that is playing there just now, and voila, we are free to go. As you can tell, we're gonna go straight here. And of course, we're gonna be met with enemy resistance, no doubt. <clears throat> he is nothing more than memories now.
huge wrath, the stupid corpse of the creature that got in the way. Okay, I think we can go through now. Nope, somehow we can't. Oh, there's, I forgot, there's marsh hoppers we have to deal with before we can proceed. Okay, that's not where we're supposed to go. It's right up there. Just had to take out some marsh hoppers first. And, uh, voila! There we are. Dunes, with all four elements in hand, I feel very confident in our mission success. Now we are approaching Memphis. It should be over that hill before us. I am reasonably confident that we will find some answers there. Do not expect an easy entrance. Memphis is probably heavily guarded. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that'll be the end of part two of my Serious Sam first encounter walkthrough. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. And if you want to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button below. And I'll see you all later, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. God bless you as well as the rest of humanity. Amen. <laughs>